It's the Score North Twin Show. That's right. Well, Dex, we might not be able to fire that sounder anymore after the Joe Polad interview yesterday on the, the good neighbor, WCCO830. Uh, nothing gets fans fired up quite like a payroll discussion in Minnesota. It's been a while, I think, since we've had a big knockdown, drag them out, this section of fans versus ownership over here, payroll brawl, because the Twins actually spent the most money on any Twins roster in history last year. Depending on sort of the time of year, it was like 154 to $159 million in payroll. And boys, Joe Polad came out, and uh, I guess credit to him for being transparent yesterday on yeah. the flagship A3O. He's been transparent for, for months now, too. The thing is, you don't have to like it, but they've been transparent. Well, okay. Let's read some of these quotes here. Before we even get to this, do you guys like the fact that Joe Polad has come out for months now and has he's a third generation Polad ownership frontman, right? Carl and then Frontman uh, like that. Right? I mean Carl was the front no, man in the eighties right. and nineties. And then Jim was the front man hey, everybody, Polad for a while. It's the Polads. It's the dancing Polads. <laughs> he's playing bass in the corner. And now he's now he's the lead singer. Yep. Do you like so the twins went into the offseason and they decided based on the local TV revenue situation and mostly that, that they were going to scale back payroll. Do you like that they are being frontal and transparent about it? Because they clearly had a meeting behind the scenes and said, all right, we're going to do this. Should we tell people or should we should we try to just sneak into the season and see if people notice? Do you like that they're being transparent? Yes, I like they're being transparent because at the end of the day, if you just try and sneak it past, someone's going to report or look at the payrolls, which which now are readily available, right? And say, well, your payroll's down by, you know, take your pick, $25, $30 million. So I do like that. There's a lot of this I don't like, and, and we'll get into to that. And Phil, when you read these quotes... There is also a very important part of the quote, though, that I don't think until Joe Polad talked to Jason DeRussia yesterday, we knew about. So, like, there's, yeah. they they were, the, you know, Derek Falvey, Dex, starting with the end of the season, was very transparent about the payroll is coming back. Mm -hmm. Phil's going to get into some quotes here that I think say far more than we knew about exactly what's being cut or philosophy. And so... I like part of it, but I've got a. But just to be clear, I have a lot of concerns now. I think there's uh, a couple ways to look at it. Uh, number one, I, I do appreciate the transparency. I mean, I I worked for Joe. I I like Joe as a human being. I saw him a few weeks ago at the Diamond Awards. It was good to catch up with him. I I appreciate that. And honestly, this ownership group. You. He was transparent. He, he said, Declan, I'm going to yeah, be transparent Declan. right now. You're fired. Yeah. The best you thing I so ever did good. was fire you, Declan. <laughs> You're so good at your job. I'm going to pay you to leave. It was a great... I got. I actually, and I got the severance package it's on so, my birthday. It was a great birthday. So it was a great birthday CM present. Punk, okay? Declan and yeah. CM Punk both getting their paper. I, I'm dead serious. That did actually happen. On a beach in Hawaii, too, but I'm it's it's one of my favorite birthday presents of all time. Um, <laughs> but it, in all honesty, I, I, I do appreciate its transparency to a degree, but I think this organization no matter who has been running it, has fumbled this conversation from a PR perspective every single time. And I, I, I believe that's what's really getting people up in arms about it. Well, God, I have so many thoughts on this, and I feel like this has been a conversation. Hell, Judd and I started doing a daily radio show together 10 years ago, and this was a white-hot conversation the first five years at Target Field, right? Yep. So, and it only pops up when they're when, – I think there's a certain sweet spot where – if they're not relevant and if they're losing 90 games, some people get pissed about payroll, but they know that the problems run deeper. But it's like when you're on the verge of maybe being one or two pieces right. away and ownership puts the ceiling on the payroll, that's when fans get the most upset. And I totally get it. Let's go through some of these quotes and then we can flesh this out here. We'll call this the payroll episode 2024 edition. So uh, Jason DeRussia, Afternoon Drive host, he asked the questions here. Fans say... Hey, we just won a playoff round. How can you justify cutting payroll? And Joe said, it's understandable from those fans standpoint, when you just look at it on paper, why if we just had the success we had last year, why would we reduce our payroll? I think in today's game, you can see there's a number of different ways to win. 
And you see that both with the Tampa Bay Rays and with the Baltimore Orioles having lower payrolls and turning out very successful products on the field, but also investing in other areas of their business. That's something that we are doing behind the scenes. And they have, they've added a ton of staff in the last like five or 10 years, right? Just behind the scenes, beefing things up, modernizing, right? But without a question, the television situation is having an impact on our business. Beyond that, we are also just trying to right size our business. That's playing into it as well. I will say, according to Forbes, the last sort of Forbes valuation, I think this is going back maybe a year ago now. I don't think the new ones have come out. The Twins have taken a loss, a $27 million loss at last check about a year ago. I'm guessing with the increased payroll last year, they probably took a loss too. So I think he's saying we're taking a loss on our business here, the way that we're operating now, especially with the local TV situation being so up in the air. And so we have to write by when he says right size our business, he's saying we need to get closer to like making a profit here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there. You guys chime in here on the first part of that quote, because there's a lot more to get to. Well, that quote, first of all, to me is super in intriguing because it does not just speak to player payroll. It speaks to the entire approach of the franchise. And Phil, you're right. And we, we know for, for a fact that Falvey in particular has added a ton of, uh, of staff in the past, what, five years now, as far as in analytics development staff goes, as far as um, basically people who when Terry Ryan was the GM, weren't there, didn't exist. They've also spent a ton in infrastructure of the ballpark as far as, you know, be being able to quantify things. Measurement of like Patrick talks about, the skeleton, like they, they've got all of this stuff. Uh, here's what I think took place, and this goes beyond TV, and it is a little bit concerning. I think what happened was, if you guys recall, um, Jim Polad did not have an office at Target Field. And so they would consult with Jim. Hey, can we do this? Can we do that? And clearly a lot of times he's like, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Hire this guy. Hire a staff for this. Um, put in internal options to take photos of Byron Buxton's skeleton because perhaps that'll help Byron Buxton, right? And Joe Polad, I believe, is the first Polad ever to have an office at the ballpark. So like Carl didn't. Jim didn't. And now Joe does. Joe spent a year, I think, watching things and internally looking at things and probably said, we need to cut back some. We need to right size, not just the player payroll, but the entire, I think the player from payroll. A biz, from a pure business, business perspective. Yes. But, and, but I think what Joe Polat's saying are two different things here. I think the player payroll is directly impacted by the television contract going down. I think the business perspective is another discussion which also means that they are trimming and that, that they've did. And cause I go back to the Lavelle piece a few months ago where they basically blew out a bunch of scouts, old school scouts and said, okay, we're done there. We've got this, these guys to do this. And the guys that used to get in their cars, you know, the old school bird dogs and drive hundreds of miles to try and find the guy they're gone now. And so that's the business side of it though. Like it's baseball ops, but it's not the payroll. Um, and the last thing he said that really intrigues me, not so much the Orioles because they've been going in this direction, but it's still relatively new, but the Rays example, like if yeah. you're banking on being the Rays, first of all, you got some cojones because the Rays have done things that are like mind boggling. And second of all, you know, the Rays get to, to a point, I guess my question is how much are you going to follow what the Rays do? Because the Rays often get to a point still to this day where they say, this player is about to earn X amount. We're going to spin this player off and trade him. So this is a slippery slope discussion now. And I got to admit, Declan, I am concerned. Because if you're going to follow this path, you better be damn good. And I still don't think you're probably going to win a World Series that way. But with the Rays example, and, and forget even them always moving on from players once they get to arbitration, get too expensive. The Rays have a 20-year history here of doing it really, really, really well. They've every, been to multiple every team World should aspire. Series. Yes. Every team, in my opinion, should aspire. Only the Dodgers might be the only other team that just produces talent out of thin air, and they do it with a hundredth of the payroll. So if you want to use the Rays as an example, 
that's not the wisest move to do because the Rays have figured out a way to draft and scout better than anyone. So I, I, t- I take more issue with that than I do with Judd's point of, yes, they, they always move on from players and they get too expensive, but it's because they have an incredible system and pipeline that can just replace those players. Wait, 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 you guys. Hold on. Before we get, this is great. I love this is a great discussion. And we'll get to, there's because there's another one here in which he is directly asked about, hey, there's a couple like 25 or $30 million free agents out there. Yeah. Are you guys in the mix? Sure. But I just want to pause this and be clear. You guys are saying, so the Tampa Bay Rays are the most efficient team in the major leagues for 20 years in terms of like wins per dollar spent. Mm-hmm. That You can give the Tampa Bay Rays the, the pennies and the couch cushion and say, here's your payroll this year. Go put a 90-win team on the field. And they do it on a regular basis. They are excellent at player development, at finding gems that nobody else wants and getting them to play at their 90th percentile. And you guys are saying that that's a bad example, that a team shouldn't strive to maximize talent, to maximize scouting, analytics, to produce a 90-win team regardless of pay- – that's a bad thing? No, I, I, I'm saying comparing your team to the Rays is, is a mistake because the Rays can do this successfully. The Twins have not consistently done that successfully. That, that's my issue I have. They, 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 like, well, well, we can be the Rays. Well, you haven't been the Rays. Like you, right now, you have a really good core of players that you have developed and drafted, and that's great. But you also went through lulls where you were the worst team in baseball for an eight-year stretch ten years ago. One of the worst teams in baseball for an eight-year stretch, and you haven't been to a World Series in thirty years. The Rays have been to at least two. So I, that's where I poke holes. I not think because he's saying. They be I don't there. think he's saying that. Hey, we are the Rays. I, I think he's. I think he's saying aspirationally. We aren't going to have the Yankees payroll. We aren't going to have the Red Sox payroll for all sorts of baseball economical reasons. I don't think he's saying they're going to strip it down to the Rays. The Twins have like twice the payroll of the Rays, but he's using the Rays as an aspirational example of there are other ways besides spending $300 million on a payroll. And we have to find those other ways because we aren't going to spend with the top five to 10 teams that have much bigger markets and much bigger revenue sources. I don't have the faith that anyone with that franchise has the ability to take that that blueprint and be successful. That's my thing. I Joe Polat has spent a year really around baseball now. Like I I know he ran go before and he's been around it. But I mean he spent he spent a year in the offices observing now and he's decided that the Rays like does he understand how the Rays work? Does he get that? Does he know if he has the right people? Well, I mean, they, I, I listen, like, you I mean, know what I mean? Like, I, I've been super critical of the twins for years yeah. and years, and I've been critical of ownership. A couple of things. Joe has spent more than one year. Joe, I mean, Joe ran the radio side for a couple of years, but Joe spent several years mm-hmm. in the different areas. So he's been around for like 10 or I would say 15 years. The twins hired the Rays analytical pitching guru from the Rays, gave him more money. Mm-hmm. And brought him in. Uh, is it Josh Kalk? I believe is his name. K L K A L K. So they like they they literally like when you say, does Joe Polad know how the Rays operate? Well, they literally hired one of the guys that's at the heart one. of Rays pitching development. Mm-hmm. That was at the heart of building their development systems, and they plucked him from the organization like four years ago. But that's one so. guy. That's one guy. And the Rays. I, I mean, the Rays play in a, a pathetic ballpark and have done a phenomenal job. I'm sorry. I think you're trying to steal. I think you're insinuating that that you have the ability to steal a secret sauce that I got no faith in you. I got no faith in that. And and as far as right-sizing things as well, I got more questions about that. Like, it, it's an interesting... I love the response because now it's really... I, I think some intrepid reporters in Florida should pursue this one. Because what are you doing exactly... Are you and and are these the smartest moves possible? Like there's just this raises to me a lot of potential red flags. And I don't know that you are in a position to have to go as far. Like you're right sizing for what? Are you right sizing because you you're trying to make a profit? Are you right sizing because well, yeah, you think yes. that, that there's stop. too Full much stop. fat? Yes. Like they're trying to make a profit. Okay. Well then right? you like- need- yeah, but I but the problem then is you probably need smarter people. You probably need to go get the entire Ray staff and just say we'll pay you more. Do it here. Well, but the Twins last year, the Twins, the Twins were one of the eight best teams in baseball. The Twins want to play. I mean, that's not let's not act like the Twins are 
five levels beneath where the Rays are at right now in terms of competing on a baseball right, field. Right, but the Twins like did that because going they into were 2024. spending more, too. Like to to their credit, they spent more. Well, they, they, I mean, Carlos Correa is a huge reason why the Twins right. won their division last year defensively. Right. So, but they're now, but they're now what? We're not talking about what they're what they did. We're talking about what they're trying to do, and this is where fans are upset. And I totally get it. Like like you are at a position where things looked really good, and last fall at Target Field there was a great vibe, and now you're like, well, but we're going to start to cut back. Yeah, well, you. I think what you've hit on, and we'll get we'll get to these other quotes, but I they, we're on a good side street here because you've hit on the intersection of the logical side of what's happening in the twins with their business operations and trying to run a business, and the emotional side and the fan side, which I a hundred percent get. On the emotional side, best season in twenty years in terms of you win a playoff series, you finally break the zero for eighteen stretch, right? It was probably the most fan excitement surrounding the Twins in 14 years, going back to maybe the opening season at Target Field, right? Is that fair to say that last yes. year, yes, most exciting Twins season, the second half of the season? I mean, that Toronto series was mm -hmm. phenomenal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, totally get all that. We were entrenched in it. We brought this show back specifically because the Twins were exciting down the stretch. We're going to keep it going. They've got franchise, face of the franchise players and Royce Lewis and Carlos Correa in their prime, ready to rock and roll, right? Like, from an emotional fan standpoint, why would you not keep going forward? Just go. You guys, forget, like, it'll it'll come back to your pockets at some point, right? I 100% get that. But on the logical side of this argument, all right, the Twins rank 19th in market size, rank all 30 teams based on market size. And again, this isn't like the NFL and, and the NBA, where most of the revenue is national TV revenue. Like, in the NFL... They're literally splitting revenue, like a, a huge chunk of their revenue is being split all across 32 teams, and the salary cap prevents teams from taking a loss. The smallest market teams in the NFL, based on the structure and the national revenue, the Green Bay Packers, the Buffalo Bills, these podunk towns in outstate Wisconsin and up upstate New York, right, are raking in like 150 or $200 million. Those owners cannot take a loss in the NFL. Major League Baseball does not have that structure. There's no salary cap. And so every team is operating within their business. Every team is looking to turn a profit. Every billionaire is looking to turn a profit. So within that structure, the Twins are 19th in market size, 22nd in team valuation, according to Forbes, and 22nd in team revenue, according to Forbes, as of a year ago. And yet their payroll has been above those marks. Their payroll has been 16th last year, 16th in 2022, 17th, and then 17th in 2021 and 2020. So like from a logical standpoint, they're spending more than where they rank market size, team valuation, and team revenue. And according to Forbes, because of that, they took a $27 million loss the last time this report came out. So what we're saying is, hey, poll ads, Take more of a loss. Take more of a bath with your business financially so that you can produce a better team on the field. And that's where we get to this like existential crisis of, I understand fans being mad that they won't keep pumping money into this thing, but they are reportedly taking a loss as they're operating. And that's why Joe Polad, love it or not, that's why he's coming out and saying, we need to right-size this thing so that we can make money running a business. Fans hate to hear it, but... Well but where he but where he's making a major mistake is this if you want to if you want to genuinely be successful and make a profit you have to win and what he's saying is well we might be pulling back on on our ability to to win in fact we are we are directly putting a ceiling now we're lowering the ceiling at a time where fans want to embrace us so basically what you're doing is saying yeah that's we're costing ourselves season ticket holders. Um, not having streaming is a whole different story. Like, like there's a lot of, here's my problem. There is a lot of short-term thought here going into the bottom line instead of long-term thought about how you really make money. And, and the Forbes thing, I, I've gone through, through this before, but the Forbes valuations in all leagues is very tortured, and I'm not sure it's right. 
I don't know. Teams can basically look like they're up operating at a loss when it's not that much, or it's not a, a loss. Forbes, the, the Vikings for years said the, the valuations done on football are off. So, but that's a different story. I don't know on that one, but I do know on this. I think what the twins are doing is basically saying, you're all excited. You all want to come to the ballpark. Yeah. You know what? We're going to have to pull back and yeah, I'm sorry. I, I get it. And I'm sorry, but my, my big thing is, and I know it's a business, but my big thing is, and this is why it takes a special type to want to work in sports. You got to get sports. Sports are different. Sports are different. Now, if you want to make a pure profit and don't care, screw the fans, which I don't think the poll ads really want to do, that's that's a whole different ball game. And you can do that, and that can be absentee owners. I mean, this buffoon in Oakland who's made a complete mess of things, he doesn't give a damn. I think the poll ads care, and if they really care, I, I just, I think saying, okay, we need to right-size the business, read the room. Your timing could not be worse on that part. Yeah, I get, I, I totally get it. I, I just, I think there's a, there's like a gray area here where in this particular case, as you've laid out, it just feels off to scale way back and not build off what happened last year. Like it, it does feel like short-term incorrect thinking, but there's also a huge chunk of fans that think, well, they're billionaires. Well, okay, everyone that owns one of the four professional, you know, major league sports teams is a billionaire. They're not, none of them, outside of a couple examples, like Mike Illich is the famous one. Mike Illich was in his 80s. Wasn't he the Pizza Hut founder? He was the Detroit Tigers owner. And Little he Caesars. famously, Little Caesars, that's what it was. Cheezer, cheezer. Is that, that what he said? Just, that, 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 that's the Little Caesars. That was just attempt at the Little Caesars. It was Pizza Pizza, wasn't it? Pizza Pizza. Pizza Pizza. pizza. pizza, pizza. pizza. And yeah. did you say cheesy cheesy? Cheezer cheezer. It's Pizza Pizza. Cheezer cheezer. Did he say cheezer too? Yeah, he said cheezer. Okay, AJ's going to cut that. You're, you're, you know what? Pe people clutch. are so afraid of being screen grabbed and, and meme. And I, you I, are not afraid of that. I that think is it's, I think it's great. <laughs> for sure. But he but he was in his 80s and said, yes, you know what? Right. I'll literally I, I just want a World Series before I die. Sound familiar? And so they spent a bunch of money like 10 or 15 years ago on those Tigers teams. But these owners are looking to turn a profit. That's how they become billionaires in the first place. And there's this unrealistic expectation that the twins should be perennially higher than 16th in payroll yeah. when they are the 19th market size team in major league baseball. So my crit, it's funny. Cause like my criticisms of this ownership, I always get for 10 or 15 years. I used to cover the twins from 2010 through 2014 and people used to hammer me for being a pole ad pocket protector, pole that it's like, no, no, they're not going to spend with the Yankees. They're not going to spend with the Red Sox. To right. me, if you were to say, where should the Twins rank in payroll? I'd say probably between like 12th and 18th any given year. Push it closer to top 10 when you're ready to rock. And so I have a problem with what they're doing this year. Right. But at the end of the day, I, to bring this full circle, I want the Twins to operate efficiently like the Rays and the Orioles have lately. Because if you get a bunch of smart people making great decisions and developing players and maximizing their potential, you can win a lot more games without spending like the Red Sox and the Yankees. So I actually, I like the comparison to the Rays. I like the comparison to the Rays if you know how to pull it off and can. But I also don't like the comparison. Here's what I want to know. How far are you going to go? So if every time somebody starts to get expensive now, like they, that's not made clear, right? Like I, the Rays, the, the Rays trading guys who are about to hit our arbitration, I do not like. I understand they've replaced them. Good for them. That's awesome. I don't know if that's a repeatable product, but... I guess what I would like to know is how far do you plan on going with that? The other thing though, that concerns me here is, okay, I get the TV resulting in a lower payroll. We could debate about that. Again, the timing, not great. I'm far more concerned about the right sizing, the business comments and like what that means as far as the structure goes. And that's going to play out. The other thing too, is if you think about it, I just feel like there's a lot of very from, from the quotes. So from the quotes, I feel like there's a lot of very short-sighted thinking here potentially right now. And the one thing that occurred to, to me is, is this. Okay, let's go back to the TV deal for a second. Because clearly there was a option outside of Bally's and Diamond Sports Group on the table, right? 
Padres are streaming games through baseball, Colorado's. There, there's a bunch of teams now that have aligned themselves with Major League Baseball, and those teams are going to have their games streamed, which is awesome. Opens up the product. Boy, it would have made a lot of sense. I know, I know you might have t- taken a cut, but if you're going to right-size things and get things right right now, wouldn't it have made sense to say, let's get the TV right right? Because do you know the, P- the but- positive PR that that would have caused if everyone could watch the Twins right now? Okay, but you're going to get that positive PR in a year because they're going to have a there will be a streaming solution in a year. I w- I would I mean even with a Rob Manfred led league and I'm not a big Rob Manfred guy. They're now they have a full year to make it their main focus. By they I mean like the 15 teams that are dealing with this regional sports TV situation. The Twins cl- and I I don't have all the inside information, but the Twins clearly decided a check up front worth 80% of what it was last year is better for us than going into some other venture where we have to then hustle ourselves to get clients on board throughout the year, et cetera. Like write us a check one more year. Okay. We can feel better about our business and right sizing our business and then find a solution next year. Like I get it. It's, it's the path of short term right. least resistance. And I don't think they're losing that like another year, they need to find a solution for this long term, but in the short term, I get why they took the check but, so that they, so that they could get closer to turning a profit with their business. Like that's the reality. Sure, but you just won your first playoff series in what 18 years, 19 years. You've got all of this excitement and so far for for the most part, you haven't given the fans anything. Anything. Well, they you're are still projected to win the division by six games. That you're cutting payroll, but I'm saying you're you are you're you are cutting payroll. You are now saying we're going to right size our business, and you're also saying a lot of you can't watch the games. I just don't know that there's the. I I don't know that Joe yeah. is doing the greatest job. Like, it's a sport. It's entertainment. You need to give people. I understand it's a business, but it's not Pepsi Cola. You know, it's not the bottling company. It's not the bank. Yeah. It's a it's a front facing business, one of the most important as far as being out there in the community. And you just had this great moment, which, by the way, the greatest thing about the the Jays game that we don't talk about enough is, you know, game one and two, that place was filled with young fans because the tickets were cheap, which was awesome. And you got all of these, you know, college age kids or high school, I don't know, to come out and experience baseball, and they loved it. And now you're all, and now you're just sort of like, oh, okay capitalize on that a little bit do something and i get that but also to defend what they've been doing so far this offseason don't get me wrong i i want blake snell i don't appreciate that joe pola just basically said we're not going to spend 30 million dollars i.e we are not signing blake snell jordan montgomery uh cody bellinger if that was not like they they have pretty much on the record now have said that so we can kiss that that goodbye and stop playing the hot stove burner for probably the next nine months but when we had this conversation like three weeks ago, what really do the Twins need that that they don't have right now? Well, Blake Snell. They, Blake Snell would help for sure. <laughs> and and they've they've hedged that, hey, we, we said goodbye to Sonny Gray and we basically replaced him with Anthony DeSclafani. That is a bad bet to make. I certainly wouldn't make that bet. But you have an incredibly young core of, that's come up here. You have a face of the franchise in Royce Lewis. Carlos Correa is one of the best playoff hitters of all time. They have built a hell of a bullpen overnight. They're favored to win the division. W- were you asking them to completely overhaul, or do you just you just want one splash? And, and that one move, that one big splash, is the thing that would make take them over the top. I think the bones of this car is pretty damn good. I get wanting to go out and make a big splash, but this team is projected to be one of the best in, in the American League. So... Where are you like jamming your head against the wall just because you want them to make one big more one more big signing? Well, just to be clear. I think they are. I think that they're uh, de- definitely the the favorite to win the division. I don't know that I would call them one of the best in the entire league. But my my point is off of this discussion alone and what uh, Joe Polad told Jason is it feels like the Twins are putting their thumb on enthusiasm and basically sm- smushing it. I'm trying to think of a bet. And by the way, Declan alluded to the other part of the, we, we just went on a 20 minute tangent and this is a great discussion. I hope the audience finds this to be uh, informative, but he did flat out say, like Declan said, we are not going to go out and spend 30 million on a player right now. Those names that fans are, uh, 
are talking about we're not in the market for those players, but there's definitely other players that could have a positive impact on the team. Um, and then and then he was asked about the Polad family legacy, and he said, I think just trying to answer the question, if it were to boil down to one thing, it's got to be winning a World Series. It does. That's why we all work here. So there's a little bit of cognitive dissonance here and that uh, our legacy is winning another World Series. Right. But in the short term, we're going to definitely put business over over. I guess winning, you could say, because the implication would be adding a player like a Blake Snell or a Jordan Montgomery would help you win more games. Those are four wins above replace. Those are four war players we're talking about. And your fifth rotation spot is very replacement level at this point. Yep. So I, let, let, let's because we got to get to write that down predictions in Purple Daily. We can do like a part two on this discussion. I think where we probably all agree here is not the greatest time to have to scale back payroll. Not the greatest messaging. I would almost rather them. I'd rather Joe come out and say, listen, I know people are asking about the payroll. We are still very much looking to add over the next three to four months because yep. the trade deadline is another is another point. Yep. You know, but we love our current team. Look at look at the Royce Lewis's. Look at the Carlos Correa's. Chris Paddock's coming back. Right. Um, I almost feel like from a PR standpoint, shining a light on. Hey, guys. Yeah, Sonny Gray wasn't the only reason why this team went out and won the division last year. I mean, Pablo Lopez is still here, and there's we brought in a bunch of badass relievers here that are going to be throwing smoke. We led the league in strikeouts last year, like as a bullpen. So there's, I don't know, there's like a little bit of a something missing from the messaging here that is landing clearly landing wrong with people. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I, I think uh, just to wrap things up from my point of view in this discussion, my thing is that it's the fact that the season's about to start. As a baseball fan, I'm excited. And yeah, I think the Twins should be good. All of that being said, as a baseball fan, I also think that what he's saying especially if you're sort of a new fan and you're thinking, should I jump in the pool, right? Should I should I jump in the Twins pool? This sort of makes me say, eh, I don't know about that. Okay. If, I, if I'm considering it, that's my only point. They might come back and say, hey, we signed Carlos Correa two years ago and we went from seventh to ninth in the American League in attendance. So is, is Blake Snell going to change and then our come back and attendance? Say, the White Sox... <laughs> The White Sox, <laughs> the Brewers, and us are all looking at Nashville, Tennessee. They need to make a move at some point, most likely. They do have the trade deadline as well. So there's other things. So I don't know. I'm kind of like, I'm, I feel I like I'm trying to. I think they'll sign an arm or bat here. Like, I he, I think Joe is being truthful. It's just not go, going to be a, a splash. The, the, the thing that interests me the most of this entire thing, though, is the term right-sizing the business as a you're baseball. Very you're very stuck on I'm very stuck that's on that. Yeah, because that to me is an overall philosophy. I think the payroll is based on on TV, okay? And the TV thing is going to somehow end up with a much different solution. But if Joe Polatz looked at this whole thing and said, too much fat here, got to trim this, got... I guess my question is, what does that mean exactly and where does that end? It means we want to make a profit on our business. But and I mean, it, does that mean it, you're and not... It, and it ends when we sell the team. <laughs> But is that like, but, like, but, I does, mean, that's, but does that not mean you're scouting? The Wilfs, the Wilfs would like to make a profit on their team as well. Right. And, but they but have they, a huge staff. But the, but the Wilfs are, the Wilfs are protected by the NFL's salary cap structure. They can't spend for, I'm, this is, I'm not, dude, we got a, we got a question from, we should throw it into the, today's purple daily. Cause it might be fitting uh -huh. that if you took this, if you took the salary cap restrictions off the NFL, what would the league look like? You know what it would look like? Major league baseball. The biggest markets with the most revenue well, coming in. And that's where baseball has a TV problem. Yep. Yep. New York, the New York Giants but would spend more than the Green Bay Packers. Joe Pullen, your happen. question has opened the door for me to ask a lot of questions now, to be very curious. Sure. So let us know in the YouTube comment section, what do you guys, I think I have a feeling, what fans think of these comments. Um, let us know in the YouTube comment section. Click the like button and the subscribe button and give us a five-star rating and a positive review on the Scorner Twin Show Apple and Spotify pages. Uh, we're going to hit you again tomorrow with a random twin of the week and some spring training updates. We'll a four-episode week of the Scorner Twin Show here, first week of workouts. See you guys.